Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for watching today. We're gonna do a chit chat, get ready with me. A lot of updates. Well, just one update on the armadillo situation. So incredibly sad. A couple of days ago, I wanna say a week ago, that poor armadillo. We were gonna call someone to come out and safely, humanely get it out. And before that could happen, we had all these storms, so we were waiting to call someone. And what had happened was, when I was going to the grocery store and I came driving back home, in our neighborhood, on the street, I saw a dead armadillo that someone ran over and it was so incredibly sad and I'm like, I have this gut feeling, is that our armadillo that's been nesting in our yard? And since then, I haven't heard about our armadillo ever coming up in our yard ever again and it's incredibly sad because they run really fast and it wasn't too far from our house where I saw this armadillo. So I'm thinking that he's long gone, went over the rainbow bridge. And I have the craziest, not the craziest story, but the craziest situation that made me wanna make this video. Oh my gosh, so if you haven't heard, in Southern California, there's this town that is one of my favorite towns on the absolute planet. It's kind of like the, I wanna say, hipster town of Southern California in the mountains that no one really knows that much about. And it has a population of, I think 5,000 or under, I think it's under 5,000. It's a little town in the mountains called Idlewild, California. And since March, there have been at least six people gone missing. And the I think they may have found two of them, but none of the missing persons cases are connected. They don't understand why because it's mostly locals, which is crazy to me because <clears throat> Idlewild in itself, there's not that many people that visit it. I only know about it because I have a family friend that lives there. It's a very small town, like I said, in the mountains. It's an hour or more past Palm, Stream, Palm Springs up a mountain. I think it's about 5,000 feet elevation or more. And I recently went there for my anniversary with my boyfriend and there's snow up there and we went right before the snow left in early March or late March and we got to experience the snow up there. It's super quiet. It's so small. There's only one grocery store. There's only one library. All the grocery stores and every th everything closes like nine. I don't think anything stays up later than nine other than some of the bar restaurants on the weekends. And it's so crazy that this has been happening in that town because it's one of my favorite places to vacation at. And it's kind of like if Big Bear wasn't that popular and was a lot smaller, it's not even that much like Big Bear. I like Big Bear, but it's way too overpopulated for me. It's like another mountain village town. And I love Idlewild even though it's super quiet. There's not much to do there unless you like fishing, hiking, building a campfire that's safe. And when we went, I want to tell you my experience there because it's so crazy that one of the people that went missing, she went missing on her own like ranch home and no one could find her and she's like a senior. And all these cases are just so random and weird. I'm wondering if they're connected. You know me, I'm like so about the hidden case files, like cold cases, like unsolved mysteries, murder, serial killer document, all that stuff is my jam. So once I heard about one of my favorite towns on the planet having all these missing persons, I was like, what? I wasn't there like maybe two years ago and it's insane. But I'm gonna tell you some of the weird things that we experienced in Idlewild. Cause it's just a weird little town, to be honest. It's not normal at all. It's not very popular, not a lot of people know about it. It's so weird that they don't even have a town mayor. Their town mayor is a freaking golden retriever dog. So who do you go to with your problems in this town if the town mayor is a dog? It's just confusing. So like I said, it was really weird. When we went there, there was a huge storm that hit the town that destroyed some of the entrance roadways to it up the mountain. So we had to go like around this giant mountain to get to town and we rented an Airbnb from a couple and it was weird to way to get in. Like, 
I researched and still didn't know and I had to ha have the Airbnb couple call me and they were kind of irritated that they had to call me to figure out how to get there. So we were two hours past the check-in time, which I'm sure they're irritated with. And since we were so late, we got there at like 9, 9.30 to check in, which is so late for them, that they had to tell us, you know, we've never been to this town and there's nothing open late, so we had to eat before we even go into town. The closest big town is Palm Springs. So it was super awkward first meeting this couple. Like, we didn't get off on the right foot since I was late. And, I mean, it wasn't my fault that the roads were blocked because of... Well, they were destroyed in a rainstorm, but it was just like awkward going there to begin with. So we went there to celebrate our anniversary. They had great restaurants. Oh my gosh, they had this French restaurant. It was so cute. It was like this cafe, coffee shop, breakfast restaurant. And they had these things called rotis, I think they're called. And they're fried potato pancakes with eggs and stuff on it, whatever you want. They were so freaking delicious. I miss it so much. They had this one, I think it was called the Lumber Mill. It was like a very casual sit down restaurant with like burgers and salads and fries and Mexican food and American Mexican food mixed. And it was so good. Their burgers were delicious. Everything was superb. We only stayed there, I want to say three days, two nights. And we had to plan everything and get up early because again, everything closes early. And oh my gosh, there was this really cool hidden treasure type antique store with this really odd steampunk obsessed guy. He even dressed steampunk and he was like older. The average age of Idlewild in this village is like, I think they said it was 55. Like a lot of people go there to retire, drink wine. There's like little vineyards and like, wine shops and coffee shops and like live music and little tiny it's just like my vibe like going thrift shopping antiquing going to coffee shops you know you could drink some wine i rarely drink but the only alcohol i can drink is wine eating foods and it's so crazy how good some of their food was for only having one freaking grocery store i guess i shouldn't judge them on that but idlewild was so odd and good. We had like this expensive Swedish massage. It's great. But there was just weird things and situations where it was like, not only did everything close early, but the locals, they don't kind of want you there, it seemed like. They had a Facebook group that I was in that I heard about because again, I have a family friend that's lived there for decades. And she told me about this Facebook group that the locals know about and it tells you about because I really want to know which road since only one road was open since all these storms to get in and out of this town. I want to make sure before I get there that I didn't get lost. Sounds smart, right? And you have to answer these questions to get in the Facebook group that I knew the answers to the questions on. I want to do a orange and lavender situation, light purple situation. And even on the Facebook group, people were kind of hateful because I asked like very amateur questions like do I need snow tires to get there, which road do I take, and most of the locals know. And even on their Facebook group they're like we don't like outsiders or non-locals, which was surprising to me. But it's like doesn't that give you guys like business at your small businesses and like you guys have gift shops. But you know, I grew up camping, this wasn't even camping, we just rented a cabin like I said for our anniversary. So it was just weird being there because it felt like the locals didn't want visitors there or new people, which is odd to me. It was so odd because they even drove weird there. Like everyone drove super fast, which is weird for a winding like road on a mountain. People drove so freaking fast. I think it's because there's not many like cops out there compared to, you know, the bigger cities that I'm from in Southern California. It's almost like the locals don't like outsiders unless they're paying for like, like the massage ladies were nice. But it was just so weird how like, even the people we were renting our Airbnb from, it was a little odd. Like, so it was a guest room and I knew it was, it was on this huge property with this huge house. And the guest room, not a guest room, it was a guest house I should say. It was like a little log cabin on their property and it wasn't too far from 
the main house, but there was another small little home on the other side. So it was like the big main house, the guest home we're staying in, and another one, but that wasn't a guest home. It was like a junk room, wine house almost, they said. It was so pretty though, because everything was covered in snow. We got to play in snow, and raccoons showed up at night, which was creepy sounding at first, but kind of cute when you looked out the window and saw them playing in the snow. And what really got me was, so when we get there, they have all these rules about what to like use in the toilet, which I understand we're like out almost in the middle of nowhere in these mountains with septic tanks and stuff like that. But what was really weird is I knew it was a guest house, right? but it was two stories but we couldn't access or get to the second story but the second story was almost like a loft this was almost like a tiny home i want to say it was a little bigger than my first apartment i want to say it was like almost 500 square feet it felt bigger because there was vaulted ceilings but then the ceiling hit this loft that's why it was probably technically a sloped two story so the healing ceiling hit this loft that we didn't know until we were sleeping at night. We got in our PJs, got in bed in our first night there after driving so many hours because we got lost, like I said, and had to call the Airbnb people, which was an ordeal. And we look up and there's this plexiglass, which is like plastic, that you could see through to the top of the second floor but there was nothing up there what I couldn't see, but which is so weird. Maybe it's because there was snow on the roof, but usually the second story of a place is warmer because hot air rises, cold air sinks. It was warmer up there, I mean colder up there than it was where we were in the first story of this little log cabin, which was odd. They didn't tell us that there was a second story and of course we couldn't access it. It was just so weird because when we're sleeping, the only way to get to the second story was a square that was right above our queen bed. So when you're sleeping, one of us could look straight up there and it's almost like horrifying because my mind my imagination, of course I sleep on the side of the bed that that thing is right under. You could so see someone peering over and staring at you. Not literally, but just my imagination wanders. But it was so just creepy and I didn't understand like, why was there a second story? Why wasn't the second story listed in the description of this Airbnb? Why is there nothing up there? I even had Corey lift me up in the morning, the next morning, because I pictured that I would wake up in this log cabin with someone or something staring down at me from that top story, because it's just, like I said, a hole that's a perfect square with plexiglass to go to the top. There's no stairs, there's no ladder, there's no way to get up there. Just terrifying. So the next morning when I wake up, I have Corey lift me up to access up there. So my head is hitting this plexiglass like this as Corey lift, lifting me up because I'm so curious. Curiosity killed the cat. I didn't die. But there was literally nothing up there. We even looked up if like maybe people ski here, but I don't think there's big enough like hills or ski resorts there or enough even snow as a matter of fact to have a ski resort there. I was like thinking of any way why would they have this like maybe they store s skis up there i don't get it it scared me it scared me even before all these missing people because like i said this was i think this was a year ago i don't remember i'm gonna look at my instagram right now and look yes okay it was only a year ago so our four year anniversary this was the picture we took there as you can see, we're in front of this house. Now that's the main house. And to the left of us in the picture, actually the right of us as we're you know facing the camera, was our guest house. And the people that own this property were still living there while we stayed the night. I don't know, it was almost like, it felt like we were at our rich parents or family members house that let us stay there. And then they're like, oh, if you need any help, you know, we're just right over there. But I'm like, paying to be there and they said they don't usually live there it's a vacation home it's almost like they didn't trust us because most airbnbs the owner's not there but i guess it's because it was a guest house i don't know 
I should have rented somewhere that wasn't a guest house because I was like broke as a joke. This makeup is all also inspired by Donnie Darkowitz. You should definitely check her out. Her Instagram is bomb.com. She is above and beyond in talent and inspires me so much. So it's kind of like that, different colors, but Idlewild, man, that place is so weird. I remember first hearing about it because one of my old friends used to go to like an all girls school out there, which is weird. I shouldn't say that's weird. A lot of people go to all girls school, but Corey even got his like haircut there. He got his hair done. It was all these really old men. I mean, I'm not surprised, like I said, because the average age is 55 and I've never been at a vacation spot and it actually not being a vacation spot, but sometimes it's advertised as a vacation spot and the locals don't want you there. I also got gypped there because, oh my gosh, when I went to antiquing, so that old man I told you about earlier who was like really into steampunk, he had these steampunk sunglasses that he was wearing and selling. And I thought he would like made them because he kept bragging about how he made these cigar box guitars or ukuleles or ban banjos. I think they were banjos. So either I heard wrong or assumed that he made like just everything. There was like really cool little art gallery things there. And he just talked our ear off. He reminded me of my dad. Like he had stories to tell, things to sell. A very interesting shop that was like the talk of the town. And he sold me these glasses that I wanted because he had them on and they looked so cute on him. And I love steampunk looking glasses. And he kept saying after he sold it to me that he gets them from all across the world. And I was curious, like he mentioned China and I'm like, oh my gosh, did I just buy something off Wish from this man? And I sure did. I went back to our place, our little cabin after and I looked up the said glasses. I just typed in gold, whatever, green. I, they were like gold and green steampunk glasses. And he bought them off Wish and sold it for me for probably more money than he paid for them. So I felt gypped, but whatever. I still wear and love those sunglasses. And then what was the weirdest thing to me, just nothing added up on this trip. You know when you have those trips where like, you're happy, you're celebrating something, but like you start arguing about the dumbest things that you don't usually argue about or care about. That's what was happening on this trip. Like I'm not a petty person like that. I don't like to argue at all with my partner. But I think it's cause like the town gave such a weird vibe that they did not want us there. That was like, oh, why are we here? Because this town's freaking weird. I really liked it though. The food was great, the shops were great and Oh my gosh, they have this one beautiful coffee shop that's so cute in the middle of the Pine Cove like town center. Like we love this little town so much even though we felt like kind of unwanted that we wanted to get married there in the future. But of course we moved to Texas. This is before we were planning of moving to Texas. And like we didn't let that spoil our trip but even when Corey was getting his hair cut by this older man there, it was almost like he was like, how did you find my shop? Are you from here? No. It wasn't like, oh, where are you visiting from? You know how some small talk goes. And even like my parents were looking for a cabin to buy and we went into their real estate office there and asked for information and they kept, well, wait, are you gonna move here? Who's gonna move here? It's like, I just want a brochure on your houses for sale. Maybe it's cause I look 19, but it was such a weird situation, but we made the best of it. We went on a nature hike. We went to their local nature museum and all the antique shops. You know how like you go somewhere and they're like, oh, you should come back. None of that. So now that I'm hearing all these locals and people visiting are going missing, I'm not surprised. That town is odd. Now I wanna go investigate. I don't feel like flying to California during a pandemic. The weirdest part too is we got, we had to get gas there. So we went to just whatever little gas station and we're asking where's the nearest fishing place or lake that had fish, fishing place. I know what I'm talking about. The nearest lake that was stocked with fish because a lot of these places in California, they have to bring in fish from other areas and fill up the lakes. And the guy acted like he didn't know Well, he knew, but he's like, oh, well this lake usually does, but uh, with the, with the rains maybe, he doesn't know. It's almost like no one wanted us to fish there, even though it was weird because they have so many bed and breakfasts. Even the bed and breakfast that one of the women went missing at, 
in the news I'll link down the news video I saw about all these Idlewild missings I have driven by there so many times when I was there and I remember it and even like when we were driving like I told you people were driving so fast that even while I was slowly pulling out backwards regularly out of a parking spot people would just zoom behind me honking and I wasn't hitting them I was or about to I wasn't like doing anything but going super slow because I'm on a mountain going backwards out of a parking spot it's so weird I don't get it Oh, and we went to this nature museum, like I said, and we went on a nature hike, but the museum, they had a gift shop. No one worked at the gift shop. No one was working there. I didn't understand. And I know that when we went there, like I said, they just had a big storm. It was so bad that the kids that were going, that lived there, they had to go to school in like an hour away or Palm Springs. And they had to take a bus that was three to four hours to get to school and then another back home from school so a lot of the kids didn't get home to like almost nine o'clock at night because they only had one way that was like it took twice as long to get out and into the town because like i said the storm had destroyed the other entrances to this little mountain village scary like i know i'm a visitor so i should feel like a visitor but it was the weirdest experience. Maybe I went at the weird time, like I said, with the storms, but the only lady that lived there that was super nice to us, she recently moved th there and she owned one of these little trinket shops. I just can't get out of my head that weird hole in the ceiling that went to a second floor on the place that we rented. Like that alone, I don't know why, creeps me out the most because like I said, maybe it's from too many X-Files I watch, too many mystery horror stories, but I'm just mixing a ton of orange glosses and pigments on my lips. These are the So Juicy tubes from ColourPop. This is in the color Va Va Voom. It's hard to talk while putting on gloss. I saw on Twitter another influencer had a problem with a themed cottage in Idlewild that she just took pictures for her Instagram that weren't even paid posts and um, the owner flipped out. It's like they don't want people to know about this town which is really weird because they have tourist attractions, tourist vents. So odd. I had the weirdest experience there and it scares me that locals and people visiting now are missing. I'm gonna put on lashes and I'll be back. And with that, I have lashes on. This is in the style Rose by Dollar Lash Club. I love it because they're smaller here and they're thicker with more longer hairs on the ends to really open up the eyes. I love this makeup look. Definitely check out Donnie Darkowitz on Instagram who inspired this. And thanks for listening to me rant and ramble about my time in Idlewild. It's so crazy that so many people have been gone missing from there. That town is so like odd, but I loved it. But I'm like investigation, too much imagination weird girl to begin with who just loves a mountain town with thrifting shopping and good food so that was my experience there it wasn't too dreadful but it was a little odd i hope you enjoyed these beautiful lavender purples plums and orange colors in this look with some little hearts rhinestones i just had to throw some bedazzle on there I had so much fun doing this. Subscribe for more videos if you want to see ones like this. I do chit chat, get ready with me's beauty makeups, effects videos, body paintings. I do two videos a week every Monday and Friday here on this channel. So subscribe for more if you want to see that. Leave a comment down below if you've ever like been somewhere haunted or a weird place, town, experience, camping you could think of. I would love to hear those stories because I am so into it. Again, I grew up on Unsolved Mysteries, X-Files, stuff like that. So you guys know the drill. I will see you in the next video, creators. And I love you all. Bye.